Magandang hapon, Luzon, Visaya, and Mindanao. Para sa ating mga kapatid sa Luzon, maya pagat panapod, na yung bagamalab, masantos siyang aram, marahay na hapon. Para sa ating mga kapatid sa Visayas, maayong hapon, maupin niya kulob, maayong ugto. At para sa ating mga kapatid sa Mindanao, asalamalaikum, malingkat mahapon, mapiyakatawa alongan, buenas tardes. Para naman sa ating mga panauhing banyaga, good afternoon, anyong kasiyo, konnichiwa, salamat siyang siyang buhaw. Welcome po sa ating mga regular na tagapakinig at tagapanood dito sa Zoom at sa ating Facebook Live. Hello po sa inyong lahat and welcome po sa ating ka-56th episode ng The Filipino Sustainable Development Goals or SDG Action Hour. Ang ating lingguhang kumustahan at kwentuhan para sa maganda, maayos, mabuti at makabuluhang kinabukasan. Isa't kalahating oras na naman po ng hitik na hitik na talakayan na mga usaping napapanahon. Ngayong hapon po ang ating pag-uusapan ay pinamagatang floodplain planning and management. And let me introduce our distinguished speaker. Ating speaker po ay nagtapos ng BS Architecture mula sa University of the Philippines, MS in Urban Planning mula sa Columbia University at PhD in Public Administration and Urban Management mula sa Pacific Western University. Isa rin po siyang urban planner, professional environmental planner, registered professional architect, at accredited urban development and management specialist. He has over 40 years experience in several projects of local governments, national agencies, the private sector, and international assistance organizations. Sa kasabukuyan po, ang mga projects niya ay may kinalaman sa inner city revitalization, ecosystem-based integrated area development, at mainstreaming ng disaster risk reduction strategies in local development plans. Our speaker is also the founding commissioner for planning of the former Metro Manila Commission, now MMDA. He also served as regional director for the Asia Pacific of the United Nations Urban Management Program from 1990 to 2004. In 2012, he was awarded by the Professional Regulations Commission as Outstanding Environmental Planner of the Year. He is also a fellow emeritus of the Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners conferred just last November 2023. Our speaker is also the chair of the Chamber of Real Estate and Builders Associations Incorporated or CREPA. His notable achievements include contributions to government policy and uh, program formulations, authorship of various technical publications on sustainable urban development and management, and involvement in various international and national fora and symposia as panelists, speaker or organizer. At ang most recent niya po ay sa ating very own National Multi-Stakeholder Conference on Exploring the Water Futures of the Philippines wherein he joined us as a panel member. Nako, kung ilalatag po natin lahat ng achievements and engagements ng ating speaker, eh, baka po ma-short na naman tayo para sa presentation and Q&A. Kaya naman po, without further ado, everyone, please welcome Dr. Nathaniel Dinky Bond Incident. Uh, good afternoon. At uh, magandang hapo po sa inyo lahat. Uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, ang topic po natin uh, is uh, floodplain planning and management. Uh, meron po akong uh, presentation. Uh, so I would like to start uh, with that. Uh, ito pong presentation na ito, eh, uh, na-present ako earlier to a group of uh, real estate developers. Uh, during their national convention. And that's why ang title po nito is Floodproofing Your Development. I was addressing uh, the uh, the real estate developers uh, about the problems uh, of developing in floodplains. Okay? Next slide, please. Um, for a while lang po, Dr. Dinky, uh, may technical difficulty na po sa side namin, but we'll just prepare po for a bit. Sorry okay. po. Okay, so good. Maybe while we're waiting, just to make a little bit of correction to sa, sa introduction, I am not the chairman of the Chamber of Real Estate uh, and Builders Association of Creba. I'm past president of it, and that was a long time ago. Uh, although I maintain my association with uh, with the real estate industry, and I lecture in uh, 
their special courses, which is offered at uh, uh, at Saint Benin on on real estate management. Okay, uh, let me just start by uh, mentioning that. Uh, Flooding is a natural occurrence, as uh, some of us know. Uh, rivers and creeks and lakes every so often will overflow. And uh, yung mga palig paligid niya uh, get inundated. And these areas that get inundated are known as floodplains. And they temporarily, temporarily store the water that, that overflow uh, from the rivers and the creeks. Now, the flooding and the damage caused by flooding occurs only when uh, people interfere with the natural flooding process, either by altering the water course, for example, yung mga ginagawang dikes na binabago yung uh, direction ng uh, water course, or developing areas in the upper uh, watershed and in building uh, structures in the floodplain itself. Next slide, please. Now, Itong hydrologic cycle, um, as uh, our uh, colleagues in the science uh, field know, um, it's a uh, you know there is a natural cycle that uh, that uh, that goes that happens. Okay, and uh, this this um, cycle uh, balances water in the air, on the ground, on the surface, and you know there is this. Sometimes it gets out of balance, and uh, you get more water in certain areas than that area can normally handle. The result is therefore a flood, and the flood inundates the area known as the flood plain. Now there are different categories of flooding. You have riverine flooding, which is the one uh, happening uh, beside the rivers. Uh, you also have coastal flooding, uh, like for example the areas that are beaches or uh, uh, yung nakaharap sa mga dagat na pag uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, storms tumataas ang ano or even during high tide pumapasok yung uh, uh, salt water into the uh, inland areas and there's also what is known as shallow uh, flooding pag yung umuulan may mga lugar na madaling pagbaha next slide please. So as I mentioned earlier, flooding is a natural occurrence. And uh, the floodplains are built by rivers. So before a development, you may have a river uh, showing uh, the forest or vegetated areas around it. And what happens is that pag uh, nagkaroon ng development, nag-clearing yung paligid or yung gilid ng mga river, uh, what happens is there will be a flood. Uh, and the people who, who built on the floodplains uh, will get affected because they did not take the river into account. Next slide. Now, the traditional solution to uh, the problems of flooding is to build structural protection works. But as we know, um, despite the tremendous expenditure uh, that these uh, structural projects entail, uh, they get destroyed after a few years because of climate change. Na mas matindi yung dumadating na mga typhoons, uh, yung mga storm surge, etc. And so we uh, experience losses uh, every year. Next slide. So just to summarize some of the losses that we've encountered over the years, uh, we had typhoon Opong in 2018. Uh, we had, of course, more recent ones than this, Typhoon Dinta in 2017, uh, Typhoon Paolo in 2017 also. Uh, next slide. Verdi in 2016, uh, Ruby in 2014, and one of the strongest, if not the strongest, that we experienced was Yolanda or Haiyan in uh, 2013, where there was a large number of people who died, 6,340. Uh, 16 million uh, residents were affected and a huge damage of 95.4 billion uh, pesos. So, next slide. 
Now, when we talk about floodplain management, uh, this is a solution. And the basic goal of floodplain management is not to pro prohibit development in floodplains, but rather to guide the development in floodplain areas in such a way as to lessen the economic losses and social disruption caused by flooding events. So this is what floodplain management's objective is about. Next slide. Now, what are the floodplain management concepts? One is the base flood, sometimes referred to as the 100-year flood, which is a 1% 1 chance of occurring in a given year. Related to that is what is known as the flood, uh, base flood elevation. This is the elevation usually expressed in meters above sea level, which the base flood is expected to reach. Now, this information is readily available from Pagasa. Okay, so we can we can get this information, so we will know uh, what the uh, uh, base flood elevation will be uh, in certain areas uh, if the if a one hundred year flood occurs. Now, the floodway is the channel of the river of the creek, which overbanks uh, you know, adjacent to that channel. So it carries the flood water downstream, and it is usually the area where water velocities and forces are greatest and are most destructive. So I think it's, it's uh, important to remember that the, the, the floodway is where there is a, uh, the, the highest danger of uh, damage. Now, the flood fringe is the area on the either side of the floodway. Uh, it's also subject to, to inundation by the base flood, but hindi masyadong mabilis yung daloy ng tubig dun sa flood fringe. Next slide. Now, this is a diagram that shows the flood plain. And as you will see here, uh, there is the floodway itself, okay? which is where the base flood elevation is expected to, uh, uh, yun yung sukat nung sa, saan yung base flood elevation. Okay? And then you have the flood fringes on both sides, and that constitutes the entire uh, flood plain. Now, this is um, something that can be measured okay, based on the topographic uh, survey or information that's available uh, surrounding or adjacent to rivers and to creeks. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Now, what happens uh, pag nagtambak in a floodplain? Okay. So by nature, floodplains are low-lying areas na pag tinitingnan ng, ng maraming tao, para bang ang solution, tambakan natin, magtambak tayo dun, taasan natin yung elevation ng lupa. Uh, the, 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 the feeling of an area is a form of development. You know? And uh, actually, when it is done in a floodplain, dapat nagsisecure ng floodplain development permit. Because what happens is when you make tambak, when you fill up a particular area, you actually are transferring the water that would otherwise flow into your area Pag tinampakan mo yung area mo, lumilipat yung tubig sa ibang areas. So, ideally, tambak should be prohibited in the floodway. Okay. Next slide. The effects of uh, development uh, on a floodplain. Okay. So, before development, you may have a river na you know, open lang yung tagiliran niya. Hindi siya natural. Natural lang siya. Wala, wala kang ginagalaw. Pero pag nagtampa ka sa whatever area on the floodway, most likely, babahain yung mga areas na dating hindi binabaha. Okay? Yun ang effect na pag nagtampa dun sa floodplain. Next slide. Now, there are a number of benefits uh, from the natural floodplain functions. Okay? One, is that the natural flood, uh, natural flood and erosion control? You know, because yung yung pag uh, flooding ng 
tabi ng mga ilog. Um, it provides flood water storage. It reduces the flood velocities and flood peaks. Kasi kumakalat yung tubig baha. It curbs sedimentation. It filters nutrients and refreshes our underground aquifers. At the same time, another benefit is the uh, biological resources and functions. The natural flooding supports a high rate of plant growth. It maintains biodiversity and integrity of ecosystems and therefore provides uh, ecosystem services, good habitat for fish and for wildlife. Next slide. Another benefit is uh, on societal resources and functions. Uh, natural floodplain functions enhances agricultural lands by sediment deposits. It provides open space to restore or enhance forest lands. Uh, it also provides for recreational opportunities or simply just for the enjoyment of their aesthetic beauty. The natural processes of floodplains cost far less money than it would take to build facilities to correct floods, storm water, water quality, and other community problems. This is a message that I think we need to emphasize uh, to, um, to many people because you know, the tendency of many people is to uh, build uh, facilities to correct floods, storm water, etc., rather than just letting the natural process of floodplains to take its course. Next slide. So uh, how do we go uh, for planning of, of floodplain, for flood hazard mitigation? One is the preparation of comprehensive land use plans. This is a requirement of all local, of local governments, cities and municipalities and provinces. The comprehensive land use plan specifies where different types of development whether residential, commercial, industrial, institutional, etc., should take place and sh or should not take place. For example, kasama po dito sa pagpaplano ng land uses are the open spaces, uh, including floodplains. So it takes into account the natural hazard threats such as flooding, landslides, storm surge, and earthquakes. It's called in the uh, uh, comprehensive Disaster Risk Assessment, or CDRA. Uh, the implementation of the Comprehensive Land Use Plan uh, is uh, done together with a zoning ordinance. Uh, the map here shows the city of Manila, uh, showing where the uh, different land uses are. Yung pung pula, commercial. Yung green, you will see uh, dun sa Intramuros area, beside the Pasig River, those are the open spaces. And then, of course, you see the Pasig River uh, crossing uh, the area. Next slide. Now, uh, uh, the other things that are required of local governments is the preparation of two things, two plans. The Local Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Plan, or the LDRRMP, and the Local Climate Change Adaptation Action Plan, or LCC CAP. These two plans identify the actions needed to mitigate and reduce disaster hazards, specifically the impacts of climate change. These plans include uh, disaster preparedness and evacuation plans. Uh, ito pong picture sa kaliwa dito uh, shows uh, an exercise that we did in Samar where we taught some barangays on how to prepare disaster preparedness and evacuation plans. And we involved the school children in, in doing the uh, uh, miniature model of their barangay so that ma appreciate nila in three dimension, uh, in a three dimensional model, kung ano ang itsura ng kanilang uh, barangay at kung saan nagbabaha at saan magbabaha pag uh, matindi ang ulan. At o, pag nag high tide na hindi bababa yung ulan, ano yung mga lugar na binabaha. So this is something that uh, is important for communities to learn when they are preparing their local disaster uh, risk reduction plans and climate change action plans. Next slide. I, uh, okay. 
Now, there are a number of flood hazard mitigation measures. Okay, the first one, of course, is prevention. To keep the problem from occurring or getting worse, we should ensure that the future development does not increase flood damage. And this is done through, as I mentioned earlier, planning and zoning. Also, the preservation of open space. Also, the adoption of floodplain development regulations. Uh, not all of these are done in the Philippines, unfortunately. So, for example, kulang po tayo sa floodplain development regulations. So, ang nangyayari na nabibigyan, uh, na declare na alienate, uh, alienable and disposable ang mga lupa kahit na floodplain. And once they are declared alienable and disposable, nagkakaroon ng titulo. And then once matituluhan, it becomes private property and then the private developer, the private landowners believe that they can just do everything they can, they want to do on those lands. Stormwater management, medyo mahina din po tayo dito. Uh, ang solution is very often hard infrastructure. Uh, the, the, the construction of dikes, river walls, uh, sea walls, etc. Uh, drainage system, pero ma, ma, marami pong uh, local governments ang uh, gumagawa ng drainage system, pero ang problema po is yung maintenance. Uh, mahilig magtayo ng bago, pero once na itayo, hindi na po pondohan yung maintenance. Uh, another uh, practice is the beats and June maintenance. Again, hindi po ito nabibigyan ng masyadong pansin. Um, so ang nangyayari na tatayuan ng mga kabahayan yung mga lugar na dapat hindi tayuan because they should actually be easements. Okay. Next slide. Please. So another measure is property protection. Uh, ito po kasi may mga lugar tayo na nasa loob ng floodplain na natayuan na ng mga kabahayan o ng mga buildings. Uh, so, to protect the property, uh, one of the measures that are adopted, uh, that is adopted, is property acquisition. Now, this is done by government. Now, ito po, hindi po natin ginagawa sa Pilipinas ito dahil wala po tayong pera pampili ng mga properties na disaster prone. Okay? So, ang nangyayari is uh, para bang we, they, the, the owners of the properties are left uh, to their own resources. Now, we have been doing relocation. Yung pong mga lugar na binabaha. Uh, and uh, because of the uh, fact that many of them uh, binabaha every year, uh, yung pong mga alam na critical areas, danger zones, what are referred to as danger zones, yung pong mga nakatira doon are being relocated. So that's being done and the relocation sites are being developed by the National Housing Authority uh, or some uh, by the local governments. Now, ito pong uh, building elevation, uh, meron pong uh, provision in the uh, National Building Code na dapat yung elevation should be uh, as much as possible uh, higher than the 100-year uh, uh, flood level base flat level. Uh, the problem, deep to bo, is yung enforcement. Hindi siya na enforce effectively. Yung flood proofing is similar to uh, the construction of uh, of uh, hard infrastructure. Oops, wala yung ating slide. Let me go back. Yeah, I think we're nandito sa number two. So your flood proofing, as I was saying, is similar to the uh, construction of, of, of uh, hard infrastructure to solve, uh, 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 to prevent flooding. Now, your sewer backup protection, this is something that we do not do because in most of our towns and cities, wala po tayo separate sewer uh, system uh, what we have is a combined sewer and drainage system. We rely on our uh, on the practice of septic tanks in the individual uh, houses and buildings, and then yung lumalabas po sa septic tank, sumasama lamang kung uh, dun sa drainage, and then tumatapon sa ilog at sa dagat. Uh, insurance, 
Ito po, meron tayo nito pero hindi rin masyadong uh, widely uh, uh, implemented. Next slide. Yung natural resource protection, this is something that has been gaining a lot of uh, more attention in recent years. Uh, this involves the preservation and restoration of natural areas or the natural functions of floodplains and watershed areas. So ito po yung ano, uh, meron, marami na rin tayo mga provinces and LGUs that have environmental codes. Uh, also the appreciation for wetland protection, mangrove protection, uh, erosion and sediment control and the adoption of best practices for stormwater uh, management. Next slide. As I mentioned earlier, yung pong emergency services, um, these are part of the responsibility of the LGUs. So meron na pong maraming lugar na merong flood warning systems, uh, yung flood response readiness ng mga LGUs all the way down to the barangay level. What is not uh, done uh, uh, uniformly across all LGUs is yung protection of critical facilities like uh, power uh, supply uh, and, and water supply. Uh, pag matindi ang nangyari, uh, ang, ang bagyo, like ang nangyari ng Yolanda, uh, yung pong, uh, source of power, source of water na apektuhan, and it took several days uh, or even weeks to, to restore. Uh, the power and the water. So ito pong ano, re, uh, the critical facilities protection call for redundancy in the facilities which is expensive and that's why not too many LGUs are able to do this. Now, of course, health and safety maintenance, uh, this is something that uh, the uh, more affluent LGUs are able to do. Uh, unfortunately, the poorer ones, particularly the fourth to sixth class municipalities are not able to do this very effectively. Now, ito pong number five, your public information, uh, is to advise property owners, potential property owners, buyers, visitors, about the hazards and the ways to protect people and property from hazards and the natural and beneficial functions of floodplains. Ito po kulang tayo sa dissemination. Um, First of all, it's not taught in schools. Uh, not like before when we had subjects in geography where we get to understand ano bang ibig sabihin ng river, ano bang ibig sabihin ng creeks, ano bang ibig sabihin pag nag-overflow. Uh, hindi na po kasi itinuturo ngayon yan. You know? So yung uh, mapping, uh, hindi rin po masyadong natututunan yan ngayon. Uh, so yung mga outreach projects, kulang din po ang ano. What we do not also have is what is known as real estate disclosure. Uh, we do not inform potential uh, buyers of uh, lots and house and lots of what the dangers are uh, in the areas that they may be willing or interested to buy. Um, our libraries are, are not very well organized for information about floodplains. Um, we do have some technical assist assistance coming from uh, some of the donor agencies on uh, floodplain planning and management. Uh, pero medyo spotty and uh, lately medyo po to Miguel because of donor fatigue. Uh, environmental education, we have a little bit of it, but uh, parang sa tingin ko po eh, kulang. Next slide. Now, the uh, most popular and probably uh, what is well known to a lot of people are the structural uh, solutions to mitigate uh, flood hazards. And this refers to the use of uh, um, or the construction of man-made structures to control water flows. It involves the construction of reservoirs, of lev levees, flood walls, sea walls, uh, changes in in the, in the way channels uh, the natural channel directions. Um, so, ito po yung pagtawa ng mga dikes, enlarging culverts or bridge openings, uh, creation of uh, diversion channels, uh, the building of storm sewers, and in some places like beach nourishment, like the Dolomite Beach, 
that the ENR did on Ross Boulevard. Now, I just wanted to emphasize here the shortcomings of these structural projects. First of all, they're very expensive. Okay. But they're very popular because I think to some people, they are profitable. Uh, it also disturbs the land and disrupts the natural water flows. And very often, it destroys natural habitats. They require regular maintenance, which we're not very good at. And so, therefore, when they're neglected, they can have disastrous consequences, as has been happening in many of our uh, uh, disasters over the last few years, where nasisira yung mga dams, nasisira yung mga levees, yung mga dikes, etc., etc. You know. Uh, the, the, uh, the flood protection structures are very often built up to the level uh, that the, the, the budget of the government can afford. So most of the time, like in the case of the Pasig River, the river walls of the Pasig River was built based on a 10-year flood. So definitely, pag nag-untoy, hindi na kaya. That's why uh, there was a massive uh, inundation that happened because ano eh, uh, dapat 100 year flood level ang ano, but it's too expensive to do that and so therefore okay na para bang yung pwede na yan yung, yung mas mababang flood level and what is uh, uh, I think worse is that these structures create a false sense of security and the people affected by it believe that wala nang baha hindi na sila babain kasi naitayo na itong mga uh, infrastructure. Next slide. Now, uh, we now know that uh, there is science and technology. Uh, that we now have the maps. We now have the uh, um, probabilistic approach, uh, scenario approach, where we can, uh, we can determine what the flood levels uh, will be in, in the coming years. And therefore, we can plan in advance. Uh, these maps just show uh, the Kamanava area, the uh, Caloocan, uh, Malabon, Navotas, Valenzuela area. In 2010, uh, ito po yung binabahang area. And then in the middle, you can see in 2060, pag nag sea level rise, it will affect more areas. And then in 2110, uh, much, much larger areas. Almost the entire area of Caloocan, the Botas and Malabon are going to be submerged. Next slide, please. So some of the recommendations, one is uh, for flood waste, no development uh, should be permitted in flood in a flood way. Okay, all subdivisions must be designed to minimize flood damage. So therefore, dapat pinag-aaralan po ng mga real estate developers yung topography, hydrology, of the area so as not to increase flood levels. Ito po ang, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this presentation was originally addressed to real estate developers because ang tendency po ng mga real estate developers, ang unang-unang gagawin nila, tatambakan nila yung area, i-elevate nila yung area without realizing that they are uh, they are just transferring the flood waters to lower areas, which they may that's na save yung area nila pero yung paligid nila ang pinabaha. Next. Just click it. Uh, there should not, uh, if there is going to be any alteration of uh, the water course, it should not reduce the carrying capacity of the stream or increase the flood base elevation. As I mentioned, we already know the information about this. So pag nagpa-plano po, dapat alam na itong mga information na to. Next. So just to conclude, flooding is a natural occurrence. Rivers, creeks, and lakes will overflow their banks periodically and inundate the adjacent areas. That is a natural thing that will happen. Hindi po tayo dapat magulat ng nangyayari yan. Now, number two, flood damages occur only when people interfere with the natural flooding process by altering the water course, developing areas in the upper watershed, and building within 
the flood plain. Next slide. So the traditional solution to flood plain has been to build structural protection such as dikes, diversion canals, etc., etc. Now these things are very expensive, uh, and a lot of. Uh, but uh, in spite of, of all of this, debts and economic losses have continued to increase year by year. Now, history has proven that reliance on structural flood control measures can create a false sense of security among the people and often leads to greater destruction when these structures fail during a large flood. So therefore, next slide. The ultimate solution is to avoid uh, flood damages is not to keep the waters away from people, but to keep people away from the water. That's it for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much.